Dino version 1.0 has just been released, the new TypeScript runtime by Node.js creator Ryan Dahl. But the reality of the situation is that projects will not be switching to Dino overnight, and the Node.js ecosystem will remain for the foreseeable future. This means that it is necessary to integrate the Dino and Node.js ecosystems in our projects, so that we can start developing our individual reusable packages with Dino, and continue to use Node.js in the outer layers of our applications when necessary. For example, to use web frameworks such as React, or to bundle for the web using Webpack. Once the Node.js frameworks and tooling you use become compatible with Dino, it should be simple enough to make that final switch over to Dino. This is what we'll be trying to accomplish in this video. So what we have here is a Node application that needs to use some Dino modules. We are using this local shuffle module that I created that can shuffle a string. And we are also using this dino.land module which can turn words into camel case. It doesn't really matter what we have here but you can imagine we'll have tons of shared dino based modules that you'd like to use with both the dino runtime and also in your node applications. There are three components we need to look at when using dino modules in node.js. The module format, the module resolution strategy and the runtime environment. Dino natively supports ESM, the modern JavaScript module system, for both TypeScript and JavaScript. Node projects use the legacy CommonJS module system, but ESM is also supported through the use of transpilers or experimental ESM support. This means that this aspect of our modules are compatible with both Dino and Node. The aspect that differs the most is how module resolution works. Node resolves dependencies in the node modules folder and a package.json file is used to describe dependencies, which are then installed by npm. On the other hand, Dino simply imports URLs directly to obtain dependencies and dependency indirection is achieved by the use of a depths.ts file or similar. The simplest solution to make Dino imports compatible with Node.js is to get rid of them altogether. We can do this by using the dino bundle command to bundle a dino module into a single file which has all of its dependencies included, and there will be no import statements left. This command has the added benefit that our outputted module will be a JavaScript file and can be used directly in Node without using the TypeScript compiler. And the TypeScript's declaration output is coming to this command soon. I would recommend that you only cross this dino to node boundary through the dino bundle command once for all dino dependencies. In this transition we lose the important package management feature of ensuring there is only one instance of a module across your project. If you run dino bundle separately for each module, any shared dependencies will be duplicated. What I like to do is import all the dino modules in one file, bundle that file and then extract it into its individual packages again. Dead code elimination should still be clever enough to remove any unused code from the bundle if you have a compilation step in your node app. Don't forget to add your bundle to your git ignore file. We can then wrap each module in an npm package and add it as a dependency in the node application. If you are using npm, you can run the npm install command followed by the path to the package or if you're using yarn, you can use yarn add instead. I've been trying out the pnpm package manager instead recently, and I've had less problems with local packages not updating. So if you're using that, you can use the pnpm add command instead. The final aspect that differs between Dino and Node.js is the runtime environment. When running our code in Dino, we have access to all of the Dino APIs and a subset of the web APIs. When running our code in Node, we only have access to the Node APIs. I don't see any compatibility layer between the runtime environments coming anytime soon. This means much of the Dino standard library will also not be available. However, if you are only using Node.js for development purposes and are producing code to be run in the browser, then you will have access to all of the web APIs. Otherwise, you should consider using dependency injection and factory function techniques if your modules need external communication, something that I won't be covering in this video. Anyway, let's see our node app in action. So we'll run our app, 
and we are prompted to type in something. And when we hit enter you'll see that the Dino based shuffle and casing modules are working perfectly. So this video has covered how to use your Dino packages inside Node.js, but what we haven't covered is how to run Node.js packages in Dino. There are some new package registries in the works, such as pika.dev or jspm.io, and these will help you import existing Node packages inside your Dino packages until all of them have official support for Dino. I haven't quite managed to get packages such as React working inside Dino, and that is why I created this tutorial which shows us how to continue to use Node.js alongside Dino. So I've been trying out this system for the last few weeks before recording this video, and I've actually not had a single problem as long as my Dino packages are not doing any external communication apart from using the web APIs. But once again those problems can be solved easily enough using dependency injection. So that's going to be all for this video, special thanks to my top Patreon supporter Helgefer Hesevik Lizette. If you want to see more Dino related videos, leave a comment to let me know, and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed. So I will see you all next time.